Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, and the dog gets it! Well, this is gonna be one of the most boring episodes of Minecraft that's ever been posted on YouTube because I don't do really much except try to. Oh, I just. You know, I'm leaning against the bed and the dog is laying on the bed with his head toward me. Okay, so. I kind of like my elbow is on the bed, right? And I reached for something, and I pulled my arm back, and I smacked him in the nose. Poor little guy. And he's real cool about it. He wakes up, and he kind of looks at me like, Mom! And he goes back to sleep, you know? But if I were him, I would kill me in my sleep. So what I'm doing, obviously, is trying to make farm space for both crops and trees. And it's not very exciting footage, but you're supposed to film these in real time with no cutaways and stuff. So I decided I'm going to talk about other stuff. Because, let's face it, organizing the basement is not the most fun thing in the world. Making space for trees, too. You know, I need some wood, I'm afraid to make torches, and I'm afraid to make a shovel, and I'm gonna need sticks, and, you know, I need trees, dude. I can also use food, but I'm not quite as worried about that, because I always, I figure there's always gonna be some dumb zombie that's gonna, like, show up and I do have those caverns right near me and I'm not lighting them up much so mobs are attracted I'm drinking a soda while I'm making this so you're gonna hear weird noises but I'm thirsty and tired because I've been doing hard work outside in the cold I'm not very good at keeping this area sealed up so boogers can't get in but oh well I'm really trying to get the tree put in place so what I thought I would talk to you about today instead of this stuff is pretty much why I started this channel in the first place which is about seeing a lot of people on YouTube who don't seem to either know or maybe don't care the kids are watching their videos, and they're doing some stuff that, I don't know, kids get enough junk already, and it would be nice if they heard um, positive things about themselves and about the world and how they can be in the world, instead of hearing all the time the, the trashy junk, you know? And I mean literally trashy, as in it smells bad, and it doesn't serve any particular purpose and nobody seems to be composting the trash they just seem to be smelling it and like rubbing it all over themselves ew I wish while I was up here I had thought to put some torches I don't think I think I put one up but a couple more I don't think having high light levels up here would be a bad plan either I don't know about light levels and trees I really don't so you probably heard about the thing that happened in France. Really miserable, unhappy people who think they're better than other people and think it's not only their right but their duty to impose themselves and what they believe on everybody else. And that's something I really detest. But part of the reason why I've been relatively quiet on my channel about what I believe. I hear YouTubers say all the time, well, that's political, I'm not going to discuss that, that's not, you know, I don't want to talk about that on my channel, and I'm not going to tell people my opinion, and, but you know what, they tell people their opinions every day, just by, oh, the assumptions they make about, like, girls can't play games, or, um, LGBT people are a joke or making jokes about other people's races or disabilities. 
They're political all the time. They're always saying things that hurt other people and they don't even know they're doing it. Or they don't care or they do know they're doing it and they're pretending like it, it doesn't matter. But everything everybody does matters. What you do matters. Look, if something scary happens to me, or something has made me really frightened or angry or uh, discouraged, I have to be kind of careful. You know, I live by myself except for the animals that live with me. I have to be kind of careful how I react and respond to things even alone because how I'm feeling, even if I don't make a sound, my animals know, they know. And from that, I can guess, now human beings are kind of um, real self-obsessed and they don't pay much attention to what's going on with other people. So they probably, oh, I should have told you about this. Crafting tables do not burn up unless you put them in a furnace, but they will catch fire. And I just totally, of course it didn't do it until I was walking right by it, but you know, that's the game. I think I'm too high up again, but I didn't know. I Somehow I missed that information in Michael's video that you're not supposed to go up above. I don't even remember what block you're not supposed to go up above. I wish I had taken the torch and sealed this chamber off so it would spawn mobs. Oh, I wish I'd done that. And I also need the torch because it would help the trees light up. You know, I mean, light up the trees. I know, I know. So, I'm thinking if my animals are affected by my emotional state without me saying anything or making faces or doing anything overtly to indicate how I feel about something, my animals know. Well, you know, human beings are animals too. And I think that even though human beings are real self-obsessed and don't pay much attention to what's going on outside their own heads and their own bodies, I think that human beings are affected by each other's emotions and, and moods too. And I think that when we're not healthy, we make people around us uncomfortable and maybe not healthy too. I'm not saying that if we're unhealthy, we should hide from people and so as not to impose ourselves on them or something like that. Because sometimes when you're unhealthy, the worst thing you can do is stay alone because you need support and you need just hearing other voices around you and being around other people will make you healthier, um, even if they don't actually do anything to change anything about your life, just knowing they're alive and breathing on the planet can help so sometimes when you're feeling bad being alone is not the healthiest choice to make sometimes when you're alone it's the best choice to make because you just don't have the um, resources or the strength or the energy or the will to um, be nice to other people when you're feeling pretty toxic yourself so that's a person's personal choice. But I think we do affect each other. And I think some of the stuff that I hear people say in videos has more to do with how they are feeling at that particular moment that they're videotaping or how they feel about themselves. And I think it rubs off on other people even when they're not saying anything intentionally hurtful or something. I see a lot of people who look like they have things they need to take care of about their lives and they aren't and it leaks out in their videos. I think that um, the internet is teaching us about each other in ways we weren't expecting to learn and I think it scares us a lot. You know the thing that happened in France? People are afraid of what's different than they are. That's a natural, normal instinct from way, way back before we were even human beings. Um, other animals that are really genetically similar to us do the same thing. They're afraid of strangers. They're afraid of 
creatures that act differently or behave in ways that aren't expected. Um, like animals in pain will jerk around or cry and stuff, and it'll scare, um, it'll scare us. So I think one of the good things about the internet, the thing that I was the happiest about back in, oh, when did I start on the internet? 1999, maybe? One of the best things about the internet was, um, is that we're learning about each other. And, um, you know, I have really close friends in South Africa and Belgium and, um, all over the planet. Dominican Republic and people that I really, 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 really care about. Canada, Missouri, you know? People that I would never have met in real life because I don't have the privilege of travel and they wouldn't have known to come to where I am except maybe they might have come here on vacation we would have met accidentally. Um, and it's a beautiful thing to be able to meet these people like just silly things like my friend in South Africa I made homemade potato chips I was talking about it on Facebook and how much better they taste than the ones in the factory and how they have a slightly sweet flavor and I think that's because we don't fry all the water out but just enough so that the sugars in the potato are concentrated and it's got this almost perfume like sweet flavor to it that factory potato chips don't have and she started telling me about potato chips in South Africa which are a lot more like um, British chips and you know like which are to us are like french fries or home fries and about something called I think they're called slappies which are soft potato chips which is kind of when I fry my own potato chips I leave some of them kind of soft and floppy you know anyway they've got these potato chips called slappies and you put vinegar and salt on them and then all of a sudden we're having a conversation about where did the vinegar come from and I suggested that it's from when British were sailors you know they sailed all over the planet and uh, colonized other countries against those people's will by the way but I mean they had to sail for thousands and thousands of miles there was no fresh fruit and they were getting diseases like they're scurvy when you don't get enough vitamin C and stuff and it permanently affects your bones and so maybe they brought vinegar with them to because potatoes will keep a long long time so you could have a whole bunch of potatoes on a ship and they won't necessarily rot and then you can fry them and if you put a little bit of vinegar on them maybe that would give you just enough vitamin C so you don't get scurvy see what I mean so conversations like that we learn from each other all the time even a little teeny tiny details like that you know like a friend of mine in Egypt who told me he can't marry because he can't afford an apartment and in Egypt in Alexandria Egypt where he lives you don't rent an apartment you have to buy one and it's considered by the culture it's not okay for a young man to marry a woman and not be able to provide her with a good home um, and about how he and his mom and his brother all working full-time good jobs engineers and stuff like that um, and they just bought a microwave and you know I'm really low income but in America being low income is a whole different thing you're not allowed to live below a certain standard of living or they'll arrest you like you're not supposed to live without running water in the United States that's a big problem so poverty in, uh, in the United States is very different because there's a standard of living here that is so high that we are all expected to live up to and it's illegal not to oh sorry I was playing with my volume on those things um, that if you don't have certain things uh, they will say that you're not taking good care of yourself and they will like put you in a home or accuse you of not living up to the health code and you know stuff like that there are real strict rules about how you live here so you can't live like you could possibly live in Mexico if you were low income where a whole bunch of people live in a very confined space and there's one water faucet for like hundreds of people that kind of thing can't do that here so and people don't understand that it. it has to do with 
America pretending that we have a better quality of life. So if you're poor in the United States, it costs a lot more to be poor than other places. It's always expensive to be poor, though. Um, so what happens on the Internet is that... Now, those of us who have curiosity and passion and like learning things about stuff we never knew existed before, for us, the Internet is like, oh, boy. Look at what I learned today. I feel like I'm always in college. I love it. But for some people, what they're learning on the internet scares them. What do you mean you don't believe in the God I believe in? What do you mean you think the earth is round? What do you mean you don't think the earth is the center of the universe? They're frightened by it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to deal with reality. They've been believing lies and stuff for centuries and to them that's just normal well that's the way it's always been that's our tradition and if you don't believe what we believe and if you say things are different than what we believe then you're threatening our tradition you're threatening our values you're you're dangerous don't go to school don't think uh just be obedient Believe what you've been told to believe. Don't doubt anything. Um, they're scared of anything that's different. And then they do stupid stuff like this business with this magazine. The reason they were mad at the magazine is because they made cartoons about the Prophet Muhammad. Now, Muhammad, I'm going to remind you, he wasn't a god. He was just... A guy who's supposed to have written this book and it was supposed to have been told him by an angel now Muhammad couldn't read or write so he didn't actually write it he told his wife mm -hmm. his wife was a very wealthy businesswoman, and she helped pay for this religion that he started yep she wouldn't be allowed to do that today that's not part of their religion that's just part of the way they want things to be that women can't do anything or be anything or get educated or in some places thrive or show their faces or that has nothing to do with their actual religion it's just they're using their religion as an excuse to be stupid you know um but then a lot of people do that it's not just muslims a lot of people do that with religion they use their religion as an excuse to be stupid and cruel so they didn't like these cartoons of Muhammad. You're not supposed to make pictures of Muhammad. Well, that's what you believe, but the rest of us don't. And it was just a cartoon and nobody was hurt. I'm running out of time in my video, so I'm just gonna say that be curious. Expect people to be different and be glad that they are. Be glad that we're not all the same. Be glad that we all have something unique to offer. You have something unique to offer that nobody ever will again. Nobody will ever have exactly your DNA, your body chemistry, your physical form ever again. Even if you have an identical twin, your identical twin is in some very small ways or maybe even very big ways if you happen to be in an accident and your twin wasn't or something like that. Even if you're a twin or a triplet, you are absolutely unique and different from anybody that has ever lived on the planet before or ever will again. And what you have to offer, we don't even know what, what the value of it is. So, please be kind to yourselves. And while you're doing that, try, even the scary people, Try not to act out of anger and fear. Try to be willing to learn. Because we don't know who the next little genius is or what the next great invention will be. And who's going to bring that to the world. It could be you. It could be that funny looking person that you're a little scared of because you've never seen a person that looked like that before. We don't know who's going to contribute what to the planet. 
And we all need to be a little patient with each other. So keep drawing cartoons and keep playing Minecraft and keep having fun and keep being curious. It's the best part of being human. Thanks for watching. I'd hug you, but my arms don't fit. Bye! Like, dislike, share, comment, subscribe, and let's go on, dip it!